In this video, I'm going to introduce context-free grammar, and this is going to look a lot more like the syntax that you're used to. So context-free grammars consists of rules, and these rules allow us to give derivations of strings. So for instance, I can do a derivation of the palindrome 010010 using three rules. A goes to 1A1, A goes to 0A0, and A goes to lambda, which is the empty string. So what does this look like? Well, if I want to do 010010, the first thing I should do is use the rule a goes to 0a0. So what does this look like? Well, we have a here, and then we can branch off 0a0. So this is ternary branching. So we can see on the left there's a 0, then it goes down to a, then it goes down to 0. And then we can recursively use the rules for a. So now if I want 010, I should use a goes to 1a1. So let's do that. Okay, so now a goes to 1a1. And now I need to get the zeros on the inside, so we can use a goes to 0a0 again. And now we're left with 0a0. And now if we look across the side of our tree, we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. So in order to finish this off, we can do a to lambda and that'll give us the empty string there. So our final result is 010010. So context-free grammars allow us to do these palindromes, which is really cool, and we can see it's much more powerful than regular expressions already. So the rules are called substitution rules, and essentially it takes a variable, which we'll call r for this case, and it sends it to, or rewrites it, substitutes it with terminals and variables so some string w. So it is important that the variable here, r, is always a variable or a non-terminal. And on the right, it doesn't matter what we have. So we can have a going to a, b, where it just goes from the variable a. We could have a going to some terminal a, or we could have a going to a combination of both. So Another example down here is the variable c going to terminals a, b, and another variable c. So if I were to draw this in a tree, it would look like this. So a, b, then another terminal c, and then we could repeat recursively and indefinitely since there's no way to terminate this tree. Since, as we can see, c is in the input and the output, this will never terminate, which means we also have to have another rule that c goes to lambda at some point in order to terminate it. But you can see with this rule that we get pairs a, b, star. Okay, there's a couple important things with context-free grammars. The first important thing is that we always have to designate a start variable. So that is what we start the derivation with. In this case, it's s, and usually I will use s for a start variable, but we could start it with anything we want. The important part here to note that with a start variable is that the start variable will usually just send itself to other variables. It won't normally send it back to itself. And this is usually a nice way to avoid having infinite regressions where you can never terminate your tree, but it's not necessary. So it is possible to have another rule that goes s to as and then s to aa, and then we could recursively go on s as much as we want. Um, but sometimes it's a good idea just to have s starting the derivation and then sending it to another rule just so we explicitly know what the start variable is. For the most part, we won't ever state it. We'll just assume that s is the start variable. So here's a question. Is the language of g equal to 0 to the n, 1 to the n, where n is greater or equal to 0, a context-free language? Now we, sh we have shown in regular expressions that this is not possible using the pumping lemma but can we do it with a context-free language? And the answer is yes. So there's really just one rule we need here, and that is that a, which we'll call a as our start variable, but we can have a rule that goes from s to a to start ourselves off. We'll have a go to 0, a, 1, and then we'll have a terminating symbol, a goes to lambda. Now, let's see how this works. Let's do the case where n is equal to zero. So we have s, s goes to a, and then a goes to lambda, 
and now this is 0 to the 0, 1 to the 0. Let's do 0 to the 1, 1 to the 1. Well, we can have s going to a to start off, then we'll go 0, a, 1, and then we'll terminate it with lambda. So that is 0 to the 1, 1 to the 1. But we can keep going. We can just take this a and keep splitting it into ternary branches. 0, a, 1, 0, a, 1, and then stop. So now this is 0 to the 3, 1 to the 3. So with context-free languages, we can generate these languages such as 0 to the n, 1 to the n. So it is a context-free language. And this is the power that context-free languages give us. So we can fix some of the problems in the human language is not regular uh, video using context-free languages. So for instance, we can have the center embedding or cross serial dependencies with this, where we have n NPs followed by n VPs. Okay, now I'll jump into a formal definition of a context-free grammar. So a context-free grammar is a four-tuple V sigma RS, where V is a finite set of variables. We denote these with capital letters, usually A, B, C, and so on. Typically in rules, I will use R as a default set of, or a default variable. Sigma is a finite set of terminals. Again, we use lowercase a, b, c, and I'll use w, u, v, x, y, and z for general variables in rules normally. Sorry, I should say general terminals in rules. R is a finite set of rules, so we can't have infinitely many rules. And we have a start variable, which in most cases I'll just call s. Now the last thing in this video is I'm going to show you how to condense rules. Now it's not very nice if we have s goes to a, s goes to b, and these are all separate rules. We want to make them nice and compact. So if we have a in our tree and we want to go somewhere with it, we don't have to hunt down for all the a's and say, oh look, there's one rule number three that can apply and one rule number five that can apply. We want to make them nice and compact. So how do we do that? Well, we just use a disjunction symbol. So I can combine these rules, s goes to a, s goes to b, by saying that s goes to a disjunct b with this line in the middle. And this states that either s can go to a or s can go to b. So now for a, well, we have a goes to 1, a, 0 here. The other possibility is that a just goes to lambda and terminates. So we can condense it like a goes to 1, a, 0, or lambda. And then with b, b can either go to 0, b, 1, or it can go to lambda. So that's condensing rules. And that was it for the introduction to context-free grammar. Now there's one thing I want to point out that will be important for the next video. And that context-free grammar allows us to do trees like this, where we have, for instance, some branches that branch into four directions, two directions, it could branch into just one direction, or we could have something that is six branching if we really wanted. Now this isn't very nice for our theories of syntax because in syntax, we want binary branching structures. So we want something like a goes to a terminal and then another variable, so on and so forth. And that would be ideal, right? That's more so what we want when we do syntax. So the question is, how do we do this? And in the next video, we will tackle this problem and talk about Chomsky normal farm. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I will answer your questions the best that I can.